Meteorologist Josh Cozart with you this evening and after heavy rain showers move through the tri-states on our Friday afternoon, they will continue through the overnight hours. I'll have the latest breakdown in the timing of these storms tonight at 10. Low pressure, it's the cause for all of this. It's going to continue to track its way further off towards the east. Some severe weather might be possible with this adjacent cold front for the southeast, but it's going to give us mostly cloudy skies and very breezy conditions for your Tuesday afternoon and into your Tuesday evening. Snow totals here across our area. We are going to see anywhere from about an inch inch to three inches of snowfall with the greater amounts in towards southeastern parts of Iowa and far northeast parts of Missouri. One thing of notes that I want to really kind of point out here is that there is some Boeing indication with this system as it really becomes a little bit more linear. That's an indication that we are going to continue to see strong winds as it tracks its way further off towards the east. The high of 44 degrees today, breezy conditions as gusts could near 30 miles per hour. We will see diminishing rain showers with maybe a sliver of sunshine just before the sun sets on your Saturday evening. But for our extended outlook, no need to fear Sunday. Plenty of sunshine, a high near 46 degrees. Then we start the warming trend. I do want to give us just a little bit broader of a view of exactly what the tri-state area looks like at this hour. Yes, thunderstorms are making their way into our neck of the woods. Again, those severe thunderstorm warnings just south of Hannibal in both Rawls County and Pike Illinois and Pike, Missouri. That's where we are seeing golf ball size hail possible 60 mile per hour winds. Now typically with a cold Canadian Arctic air mass moving into our area, we typically like to see cloud coverage as long wave radiation, which is basically the heat that the surface of the earth holds. You typically it gets trapped underneath the clouds. That's not going to be the case. However, tonight as clearing skies continue, all of that long wave radiation is able to escape out into the atmosphere, helping to drop our temperatures even colder in about a week's time, the tri-states has seen a temperature increase of nearly 65 degrees, and it's been about 23 days since we've seen the snow-free ground. <laughs> wow! I have to tell you guys that there is a fine mist or drizzle coming down, and it's really been coming down in Keokuk for about the past hour, and that has created a very slippery situation. You can see I'm standing on the sidewalk just off of the main drag in Keokuk, and it is very difficult to stand up. <laughs> I'm going to be careful here so I don't actually take a tumble because conditions are very treacherous outside and the reason that we're actually seeing this is all due to warm air that is above us it's only been out here since the top of the show and I can just even kind of uh, yeah uh, no damage done to this t-shirt and I haven't quite decided yet is if all of our clothes were this way would it make it a little bit easier to maybe fold them a little bit I don't know that debate's still up in the air but don't go anywhere KHQ news at 6 we'll be right back after this I've heard some people use mayonnaise to do that. Mayonnaise? Mayonnaise, I've heard. Yes, washing your hair with mayonnaise is supposed to take the static away. I don't know. I've never tried it. I would go with this. This is probably <laughs> a lot better. I was and just you want to smell it. Hopefully you wouldn't smell the mayonnaise. That would <laughs> yeah. be a little bit of a smelly person to hang uh, out with. Just say, oh, that's my lunch. <laughs> Fear weather can come in many different forms. Large hail, strong damaging winds, and even the threat for tornadoes all fit under that umbrella term. Now all we need is a lifting mechanism, such as an updraft to pick that rotating column of air and move it vertically. That's when a tornado can form, but it's not a tornado until that funnel cloud actually reaches the ground. We've already seen sub-zero temperatures this winter, and the infamous polar vortex may be at the works yet again. It's a good reminder to tell your kids to make their forts in the yard and not in the street. Well, you could be looking at a out of focus view of my Christmas lights at my place, but it's not. It's actually South 36th Street cover in fog with our sleep tight camera atop our studios right here in the gym city. And our current temperature is starting to slide back slightly. 34 degrees is our current temperature. That humidity still on the high side thanks to all of that fog at 96% and a north wind kind of on the gustier side at about 17 miles per hour. Out towards Macomb, oh boy, what a spooky kind of eerie side out there tonight. Almost looks more like Halloween in the Christmas season. You are at the freezing mark at 32 degrees, 100% humidity and a north wind at about 14 miles per hour. As for the rest of the tri-states, really we're seeing temperatures into the middle 30s for a lot of us here. Keokuk at 32, Hannibal at 34, Monroe City at that 34 degree mark, and Mount Sterling at 35 degrees. As for our winds, mainly out of the north, all due to a low pressure system centered down to our south, but gustier conditions along the Mississippi River Valley as really wind speeds are anywhere from about 
about 10 to 20 miles per hour. When you add in that wind, it makes those temperatures feel even colder. Temperatures now dipping back with our wind chills feeling closer to the lower 20s for a good portion of us here in the tri-states. There's that low pressure system bringing that north wind in. It's tracking its way further off towards the east, but will remain to the south. We are expected to see dry conditions tonight. However, that fog and the light cloud coverage will continue to stick around. Now that cutoff low, it's going to continue to track its way further off to the east. High pressure moves in behind us, giving us plenty of sunshine here in the central plains and a good portion of the tri-states along with some warmer temperatures as well as that high pressure really kind of slows down, stalls out over our area here for the next couple of days. Sunday conditions are in our forecast and we kind of give you a little bit better of a breakdown here with our home bank forecast in motion. There's those clouds tonight. They start to push their way further off towards the south and east, giving us some clearing conditions. However, I think some of the fog might stick around and won't clear out until around 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning. Sunny conditions expected for us into our Saturday afternoon and evening hours. That is going Going to allow for our temperatures to warm up slightly with the sunshine into our Sunday morning. Just a few fair weather clouds start to make their way into our area. Mostly sunny conditions are on tap for our Sunday afternoon and into our Sunday evening for tonight. Fog remains 30 degrees for our low north winds at about 10 miles per hour. Tomorrow we warm up quite nicely 48 degrees, plenty of sunshine and again that north wind right around 10 miles or so. There's the sunshine. It's in abundance here. Temperatures slightly on the warmer side for us. It's going to feel like summertime come Wednesday and the first official day of winter is this upcoming Friday. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Mississippi River levels remain high across the tri-states as we continue to trek through spring. Not only are high water levels drowning out homes and businesses, but it's also rendering many roadways impassable as water continues to flow over them. However, there is some good news in the short term. While well, U.S. Highway 136 remains closed from Alexandria, Missouri to the Iowa border, Mississippi River levels are starting to recede for now. The National Weather Service has the Mississippi River at Keokuk at just under 19 feet. That puts Alexandria, Missouri back into a moderate flood stage. That's good news after this past weekend's crest at 20 feet. While the shoulder of roadways remain like shorelines or even miniature waterfalls, there's no timeline of exactly when travel across the tri-states along the Mississippi River will return to normal. As we remain at the mercy of the Mississippi River here across the tri-states, the only thing that we can really do is to hope that rainfall stays at a minimum as we continue to make our way through spring and that water levels will recede sooner than later. In Alexandria, Missouri, meteorologist Josh Kozart, KHQA News. That's right, Rich. I'll get to some of those in just a few minutes, but as temperatures start to rise across the tri-states, so too does my spring fever. But there are some plants that you can even plant starting today. Perennials, trees, shrubs, anytime now on, we're fine. The growing season is just a few weeks away now. That means it's time to start thinking about preparing your garden. Well, starting out, um, obviously cleaning up any debris left from last year, anything that's left over, any old leaves, get all that cleaned out. If you have a severe case of spring fever, there are plants that can be planted today. For planting outdoors, sort of depends on what type of plant material you're talking about. So if you're talking about planting trees and shrubs that are hardy, as long as the ground's not frozen and the plants haven't started leafing out, in other words, they're still dormant, you can plant at any time. Well, it's still too early to plant outdoors for sensitive plants. There are a few common mistakes that are made in a first time garden. Probably the biggest thing in, in gardening for vegetables and herbs, things like that, is just making sure, number one, the area you choose gets enough sunlight Four to six hours of sunlight is the ideal amount for a vegetable or herb garden. Um, that's number one. Number two is drainage. There is a benefit from sowing your own seeds. So if you've got an opportunity and an area to start the seeds indoors, you can certainly get a jump start on things by starting them earlier inside. For a garden staple like tomatoes or peppers, you might want to wait. So you're looking at later in April, late April, for a time frame on those where your peas and spinach and leeks, um, those are early season now, a week from now, a couple weeks from now. 
So I've already planted my seeds. They're safe and warm inside because temperatures are still kind of on the cool side for these types of plants. But I'm going to be transplanting them outside right around Mother's Day. That's kind of the safe bet. But for right now, you can go ahead and start tilling up your garden, really getting all of that topsoil turned around, even getting down deep as well that way again all of that drainage is able to keep your plants happy and healthy this spring in quincy meteorologist josh kozar kqa news